What's up everyone, Designer14 here, and I'm in the middle of like an internet blackout or something, cause I can't access any of my work files and they're all on the cloud, which isn't good cause I have a lot of work to do. Uh, but I thought, hey, why not take this opportunity to break out the camera, let's shoot a tutorial. Uh, this is something I've actually wanted to teach for a really long time. So I'm super excited, let's jump in, but first, roll the intro. Welcome back guys, since my internet is down, uh, I can only open Illustrator, nothing else, so I thought this would be a great time to teach layout design using a grid system, particularly the golden ratio grid. And like I said, this is something I wanted to teach for a really long time, so we're gonna jump into Illustrator. If you like the video, make sure you hit a like button at the end, that really helps out the algorithm. Let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So here you see in Illustrator that I've got a blank canvas or a blank piece of paper. Uh, we're gonna be using some basic elements, brand, date, head, body copy, and kind of a list of services. And we're gonna learn how to lay out those things in a way that's really dynamic and pleasing to the eye. So if you are a brand new designer and you just wanna improve your layout, or maybe you're a designer who's just uh, maybe a little fuzzy on layout, you wanna get better, this is a tried and true technique that can help you increase the symmetry in your design and make it overall a more pleasing look to the eye. And we're gonna do that using the golden ratio. So if you don't know what the golden ratio is, the golden ratio can be found across nature and it's definitely worth Googling. So you should look it up, um, see just kind of all the examples, but we can use this in design to make our designs more pleasing to the eye because the golden ratio is the most pleasing ratio to the human eye. And the golden ratio is just made with basic squares. I can just show you kind of the, it's basically square and square and then equals bigger square, just like that. Bam, and then you just keep going. And that's the way that works. All right, I don't want you, all right. So that's the way that works. And we're gonna use this golden ratio to uh, create more dynamic layouts. And the way you do that is you just take your golden ratio and you make it as big as your page. I'm obviously holding shift to keep the integrity of the ratio. Um, and you can lay this out however you want to. I mean, you could go that way, you could go that way. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna use it this way. And I'm gonna make it as big as my paste paper and then I'm going to align it to the left-hand side. Now, we have basically created a golden ratio in our piece of paper, and that's really cool because we can use the golden ratio to create dynamic layout design. So the way that I'm gonna do that is by grabbing my guides from the rulers and just dragging them out to intersect with the squares. And my guides probably look a little different than yours. They're uh, lighter because I think that the default guides in Illustrator are really obnoxious, so I always go in and change them. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Just thought I'd give you a note. Uh, if you are also distracted by the guides, you can change them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag these guides down to intersect at each of the squares, as you can see, each of the squares like that. And you guys don't need to see me do this per se um, because it's kind of pointless and I already did them. Bam, look at that, guides. So here we can see we got guides on each of the different squares and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the golden ratio now. And there you go. We now have a golden ratio grid on this piece of paper and we can now use that to take these elements, which I mean, there's nothing wrong with the way that these look right now, but we're gonna take them and make them a lot better. We can take them, let's bring them over here, and let's see what we can do with the golden ratio. So let's go ahead and start with kind of the main part of this, the title and the body copy. And let's just take the title heading and put it right there, kind of at that intersection. And then let's take the body copy, bring it right there. 
come on, line up, there you go. And what you can see is that we're actually using the grid lines of the golden ratio to create a symmetrical design. Right here, we've now created, using the, the axis right here, this Y axis, uh, we've created a relationship between the heading and the body copy. So rather than bumping the body copy out there, now we've broken the relationship. So right here, we've created a relationship by using the golden ratio grid to say, hey, this is related to this. And that's a really cool thing uh, because that means we don't actually have to have the heading right above our body copy. We can actually take that heading and we could move it however far we wanted to and we can use that line to create relationship. Now, obviously in this case, I don't wanna do that because I'm using this grid right here and I wanna keep this heading on the grid line. But let's bump the body copy down. We don't ever want body copy quite that large. Um, let's go ahead and bump it down to nine. So there's nine point font. Nine point font looks pretty good. Uh, just a note, if you are doing layout design, nine point font, eight point font, uh, 10 point font, those are really your sweet spots. So eight to 10, uh, you don't really wanna go lower than that and you can obviously always go higher, but it starts to become a little bit too blocky, a little bit too much, too big. I know everyone's like 12 point times New Roman, that's what they teach you in college, but that's not correct. Uh, most fonts look best and most readable at nine point. So we're gonna leave this at nine point font and instead of medium, let's go down to book, make it a little lighter looks a bit better and we're actually using that whole box at this point uh, to kind of block this body chunk out and say hey this is this is a important thing that you need to read so let's go ahead and take the brand now uh, this is maybe the brand name or something like that and let's make it um, a little bit more bold uh, old. there we go and now we can actually take this brand and we can use it along the axis to create a new sort of relationship. Um, for example, one of the things we can do here is bring it right there. And now we've created an interesting re relationship between brand and the body type. Now, this is probably not what we wanna do because uh, we don't really, we want the title to be related to the body copy, not the brand. Uh, but I'm just showing you some different examples of how you can lay out designs. What would probably be better to do is to bring the brand down here. Again, there's no line down here, uh, but the guides are more there as a starting point. So uh, this can kind of be a starting point. And then let's bring this in so that it's the same size as that guide. I'm doing this really rough, and if I were actually doing it, I'd take my time to, to get it a little bit better, but for right now, let's just make that about there. So now, brand is actually filling um, this section of our grid, and that's pretty cool and dynamic. One of the things we can do is we can now take the date, and let's say that we wanted to do this I don't know, maybe a little bit differently. Let's make it, um, let's do something like this. January 1st, 2020. One, nah, I like the zero in there. Boom, all right. Uh, it's gonna be a little too big. I'm just kind of playing with stuff right now. Um, just showing some different ways that you can lay out the type. So, okay, so there we go. So we got January 1st, 2020, I like that. A little bit blocky, it's all right. So let's go ahead and make this Eh, let's leave it the medium. We'll just go down in point size. So now we can actually take this um, January 2020 and we can line it up on this axis and align it with the brand. Probably just gonna make this as big as the brand. Increase the 
flooding on that. Or decrease, or decrease it there a little bit. Boom. All right. I'm liking that, all right. So now, we take this and align it over there. And we're using, we're just using our grids, just, just like, you know, anybody can do, just laid out the grid. Now we're just lining type up on the grid. And uh, what you're seeing here, I actually wanna take these down a little bit. Ooh, not that far, not like so. And what you're seeing here is a relationship, again, relationship between typography elements, between the brand and the date. We always wanna create relationships as much as we can with type. Um, you wanna guide the reader's eye through the page. And the way that you do that is by identifying a flow of relationships. This is related to this, that's related to this, and this is related to this. That's how we're gonna bring the reader's eye through the design. In this case, what we have here is we have a title heading, which is sitting on this uh, grid line from our golden ratio grid. And we can say that this slit is related to the body copy. And then as the reader's eye flows through, they're now seeing that it's related to the brand, and then the brand is related to the date. So we're actually creating a flow for the reader. And that's really cool and unique. And if we take this away, if we take a, take the grid away and we take the, um, if we remove our elements off the grid, just like this, real fast. Now you can see we've broken the flow. We've broken the relationship. There is no relationship between any of these elements. And so they look like somebody just kind of threw them on the page. So this is a really simple way to create different layout designs. Um, let's see what we can do with this list real fast, just if we were playing around. There might be a way. Make this list a uh, all caps list. Space out the tracking a little bit, and then make it kind of tiny. There's something interesting. If I bring it out a little bit more, whenever you use all caps, you need to spread the letters out because caps are a lot harder to read than lowercase. Um, it's harder to identify, and I'll show you an example real fast. If you have cap, all caps, let's just make this a little bigger so you can see. So if we have all caps and we were to type out, um, let's type out 14. So reduce the tracking back down to zero. So there's all caps 14. And then let's do the same thing again. Oops, got all caps stuck on. Get rid of that, there we go. All right, let's do the same thing, the lowercase. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, right now, obviously, these are both very readable. But what the problem is, is as you zoom out, the letter forms of the all caps start to become one. And the reason they become one is because they are basically creating a shape or a box, as you can see like that. Whereas here, we have a little bit more dynamic layout because what we actually have instead of the box is that we've got a, there we go. We've got a box like this. This is its own box. There we go. So this is its own box. This is its own box. This is its own box. Every box has its own height, its own width, its own shapes. And so it's a lot easier for the eye to read lowercase letters than uppercase letters. For that reason, when you're making uppercase letters small, you need to increase the space between the letters, make it a little bit easier to read for people. That's just a quick side note, bonus tip. Might do a video on uh, that type later. So here we've created a, a interesting uh, relationship where this type this list is sort of related to the brand. And that probably doesn't work quite right because we probably don't want this list to be the first person, the first thing people read, and right now it is. 
Um, people always read top left over to the right. Uh, but what if we switched the brand? Say we wanted somebody to notice the brand first. Let's bring the brand up. And then we can make this list here. And we can align the list with the bottom of the date. And probably get away with making it a tad smaller. Just a tad. There we go. Now we've created a relationship between the brand and this list of services or this list of names. If we wanted to create a relationship between the list and the um, and the body copy, we would then move it like that. And now you can see the relationship has changed to be between the body copy and the list of services. So it's all about creating the the flow that you want your reader to have through the entire design. And as we play with this, um, you can get real creative. You can do all kinds of sorts of things. Uh, for example, we could maybe want to cut this type off if it was the brand. And we can just create a quick clipping mask to show what this would look like. So maybe we want to create the brand like that. And that creates a totally different feel between the layout of the design. Brand is very heavy on the right hand side. Uh, if we wanted to make it a little less heavy, we could maybe change the color. There's a few different ways to make co uh, different contrast levels. There we go. That makes it a little less heavy on that side. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on contrast soon and talk about how to change contrast. But for this lesson, uh, we're just going to stick to the grid system. So. Uh, that creates a really dynamic grid piece for you to use. And then maybe we wanted to use, maybe we want to switch the title heading to something like this. Switch over to all caps. You create a relationship like this. Maybe something like that and then we can make this list. Maybe this list needs to be a little bigger. It's okay. Do that. And then maybe we want to take, oh, you know, you can take the bottom four. Let's reduce the tracking a little bit since it's a little bit bigger. We don't need quite as much tracking. Dropper tool, pick up that type. There we go. And maybe create something like that. Let's put this down again. That creates a different feel for our layout. Now we've got the title heading on its side axis, and then we've got the body copy and the list, which then hits this axis. Um, and probably a better way to do this, because I don't like the way that that really works out. Um, better way to do this, we could take the date then. I, I just didn't like the way that, I don't like the way that this is floating right there, but we could take the date and we could hit the, put the date on that axis line. Doing this really rough and quick like. So I'm not really taking my time. And that creates a different relationship between the date, the title heading, and the body copy. This is just a quick example of how you can use a grid system to make your typography elements a little more dynamic and a little more pleasing to the reader's eye. And obviously this layout's not perfect and there's a lot of things that we'd have to continue to work on and tweak, but I just wanted to really quickly demonstrate how you can use this grid. And it doesn't have to be just this grid. There's a lot of different grids out there and maybe I'll talk about some in a future video, but I would encourage you to use a grid system the next time you're laying out a typography project to create symmetry and flow between your elements that guide your reader's eye through the design in a way that's pleasing to them. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, drop me a comment, subscribe to my channel. You're not gonna wanna miss any of the content that's coming out. I'm so glad you joined me for this one and I'll see you in the next one.